Good day, STEM students. This is Felman L. Maninang, your General Physics 2 teacher. Ang teacher sa alam na may alam. Okay, so continuation lang to ng ating video for charging. So, in this video, I will still discuss methods of charging, but now I will discuss charging by induction. So, sa una kasi, na-discuss ko na doon yung charging by conduction and then charging by friction. So, ito po yung video. Pakisubaybayan na lang po kasi medyo marami pong proseso for charging by induction. Kaya hiniwalay ko. So, take down notes na lang po sa mga nangyayari sa charging by induction. To explain charging by induction, I will use similar chart used for charging by conduction. Para makita nyo yung kaibahan. So, ulitin ko. We have here a negatively charged ebonite rod. And then, we still have our neutral metallic sphere supported by an insulator. So, ano po ang kaibahan? So, ito ang kaibahan. Una, there is a gap. When we charge object using charging by induction, the charging object should not touch the object being charged. There should always be a gap. So, anong effect na ito? The negative charge of the ebonite rod will push the negative particles in the metallic ball or metallic sphere, causing it to have regions with positive charge and regions with negative charge. So, may mga regions na siya. But as a whole, it is considered as neutral. And you call that polarized. So, nabanggit ko na last time yan. No? So, yung mga object na nilalapitan natin ng mga charge uh, objects, nagkakaroon po siya ng movement of charges causing it to have regions to be positively charged and regions to be negatively charged. But as a whole, it is considered as neutral. Pero sabi nga natin, it is polarized. So what will happen if we will attach a wire connected to the ground? So if we will do this, we will allow electrons from the metallic sphere to escape to the ground. And you call this process grounding. So yan po, yung electrons po sa metallic sphere will go to the ground. Now, what will happen if we will remove the ebonite rod without removing the wire? If we will remove the negatively charged rod away, no, if we will move it away, the electrons from the ground will just return to the sphere, giving its uh, original uh, charge, which is neutral. But if we want to, but if we want to charge this, kung gusto natin i-charge to, using charging by induction, so una natin gagawin is Di ba, habang nakalapit pa si ebonite rod, we will remove the wire. Bakit? Kasi yung mga electrons sa lupa ngayon, no, na galing sa metallic sphere kanina, will no longer be able to return to the metallic sphere. And in effect, it will cause the sphere to become positive. So ito yung kahibahan ng uh, charging by induction sa charging by conduction. Sa charging by conduction, if the charging object is negative, the object being charged will become negative too. And if the object is positive, the object being charged will become positive. Sa charging by induction, if the charging object is negative, you will have a positively charged object after the charging by induction, if done properly. So, kung maalala nyo yung grounding, kapag mali yung pagtanggal nyo nung while habang nakalayo na yung charging object, so magiging neutral lang ulit yun. Okay? So, let us have another example. Ito, uh, familiar kayo, no? Kasi parang malakita nyo na to. So, we have here two neutral sphere. So, yung mga sphere na to ay mga conductors. Ibig sabihin, their, their negative charge could easily move from sphere to sphere. So, what will happen if you will place a positively charged object near one sphere? So, ano mangyayari? Ito po. Yung mga electrons, the negatively charged particle, will be attracted to the positively charged rod. And then, leaving the positive charges on the other side, on the other ball. Kung mapansin nyo, no, yung isang ball, napunta sa kanya yung mga negative charge, sa kabilang banda, naiwan na lang yung mga positive charge. Remember, hindi kasi nakakagalaw yung mga positive charge. No? So, yan po yung mangyayari. Now, what will happen if we will make or we will place a gap between them? Habang nandyan pa yung positive charge rod. So, what happens? Still attracted pa rin yung electrons, but now, dahil may gap, these electrons will no longer be able to return to the, the, the second sphere. So, ano mangyayari dyan? 
after the procedure, the two balls will have different um, charges. The first ball, yung ball natin na nasa kaliwa, will, be, will become negatively charged and the ball at the right will become positively charged. So, dito lang tayo mag-focus muna kasi ito yung sa charging by induction. Uh, dahil positive ang charging object natin, the rod, nagkaroon tayo ng negatively charged spear na nandito sa kaliwa kasi siya yung nilapit. Sa kanya natin nilapit yung yung rod. Habang sa kabila, ito yung ang corresponding neto kanina sa first explanation ko. Corresponding neto is yung ground. Dahil sa nawalan siya ng electrons ngayon, dahil napunta nga dito sa sphere na to, naging positively charged object siya. Now, question. Ganon din ba nangyayari sa Earth kapag ka nawalan siya ng electron? Actually, hindi po. Sa sobrang laki po ng Earth, kahit mawalan siya ng electron or madagdagan siya ng electron, halos neutral pa rin siya kasi yung laki nun. <laughs> yung laki nun, eh, hindi na nararamdaman ni Earth yung sobrang liit ng pagbabago sa kanyang charges. Pero, kapag nagkakaroon naman siya ng malalaking charge, no? charge na difference, may nangyayari sa kanya, may nawawalan siya or nagkakaroon siya, nagkakaroon tayo ng isang phenomenon na nagja-jump yung charge. At alam ko, familiar kayo dito. Ang tawag po doon ay lightning. So, yan lang po ang charging by induction. Okay, so since familiar na tayo ngayon sa tatlong pamamaraan ng pag-charge, again, charging by friction or rubbing, charging by conduction, and charging by induction, ang sunod na tanong natin, how will this charge interact with each other? Lalo na kung multiple. Nabanggit ko last time, kapag pinag-uusapan ang Coulomb's Law, yung common misconception doon, dalawa lang siya, no po. Uh, pwede po yun ng marami, but you deal with them as a pair. No? Ganun lang siya, pero kinukombine mo muna ron yung mga pwedeng i-combine using analysis of vectors or pwedeng graphical, pwedeng component method. But again, pwede po siya sa marami yan. Now, to understand how these multiple electric charges interact with each other, I have here a, uh, a very helpful um, pet simulation to visually see the magnitude and the direction of the force acting between these charges kahit ilan po so hindi po kahit dalawa lang no pwede pong marami saka mabilis siya no ah, kung ang habol mo lang naman is to predict or to identify the direction of the force magandang gamitin ito so i would like you to watch this video but the link for this uh, pet simulation will be uploaded dun sa ating FB group para magamit niyo rin if you want to play with it so ito po To explain how multiple electric charges and their electric field interact, I will share a pet simulation that is very useful in showing the direction of the force acting between these charges. Actually, we, pwede naman natin gamitan yun ng graphical method, pwede natin gamitan ng analytical method, yung component method natin for vector quantities, or we could use this simulation. So, for example, I have here three charges, no, equal charges, that is equilateral to each other. So, titignan natin. Alam ko, naaalala nyo pa yung tanong na yan. So, kapag dalawa silang positive, they push away each other. Kung titignan natin sa gitna yan, no? so, halos wala na siyang force between no, sa gitna niya. So, kung tinatanong natin, um, saan magandang maglagay ng charge na hindi siya makaka-experience ng electric field or force, ilagay mo sa gitna yan, midway. Okay, kasi nagpo-push sila each other, tapos sa lugar na ito, yung electric field wala. Kung naalala nyo yung pattern natin. So, if we will have three, identical na malimbawa, triangular natin, equilateral natin yan. So, may iba yan. So, kung titignan natin yung force between them, naayos sila natin ng konti, uh, pansin natin, Okay, so paano tayo describe yan? So, dito medyo mahirap, dito medyo mahirap. Pero pag dito, pag gumawa tayo ng line dito, papansin natin, this is perpendicular to the base of the triangle. So, yun po yung sagot po dito. Okay? So, andito po yung kanyang force at the center. Tapos, it is perpendicular to the base of the triangle. Pag tatlo. Okay? So, ito po yung paggamit ng uh, electric. Uh, charge and field na pet simulation. So, marami kang pwedeng gawin dito. Actually, pwede mo ring pataasin yung mga charges na ito. So, for example, we have um, three 
ano, ng three, three kulum, na meron tayong tatlong kulum ng mga charges. So, pwede mo lagyan to. Kung mapansin nyo, nilagyan ko lang siya ng isa dito, na iba na yung direction. Kasi hindi na siya equal charges. So, tingnan natin, iba na naman siya, naging zero na siya. So, lagyan natin dito. Balik na naman siya, kasi equal na naman sila, tigdadalawa na sila. So, gawin natin silang tigtatlo. And then, yan na naman siya. And then, kung mapansin nyo, same direction, but greater force. So, ito po yung nangyayari dito, no, using these charges. No, pwede, again, pwede mo siyang gamitan ng graphical method, kung familiar kayo sa vector addition, or yung uh, analytical, yung component method. Pero, dito kasi napakadali na mas mabilis na siya makita yung direction niya. Okay? So, halimbawa naman, iibahin natin yung charge ng isang ano, ng isang charge dyan. Gawin natin siyang Uh, negative itong part na to so yan dito isa dalawa so meron tayo dyan positive 2 and then dito isa tignan natin muna sa diagram ha so 2 and 5c so gawin natin 5 to 3 4 and 5 and then We will have a negative charge here. So, pag negative yan dito, mapansin nyo, no? The positive electric fields na outward, nagmumove siya inward doon sa negative. Okay? And then, pag nilagyan natin ng sensor, yan, sa gitna. So, yan. Okay? So, yan nandiyan yung direction niya. Okay? So, pag, ni pag nilapit mo siya sa mga charges, siyempre, naapektuhan yan. Pero, midway between them, makikita mo yung pinaka-resultant force niya. Okay? So, yung pinakahuling ipapakita ko, what if you have, ano, two charges dito, tapos two charges din dito, and then, five charges sa taas, may hati ayusin ha, two, three, 4, and then 5, sa baba, ganun din, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pag nilagyan natin sa gitna yan, no? Napin natin yung pinakagitna. Ayan, actually hindi lang siya perfect kasi wala tayong ano. Pwede natin lagyan ng grid yan, pero siyempre, wala tayong luxury of time. Titignan natin mabuti, no? Zero siya sa lugar na to. So, kung naaalala nyo yung diagram doon sa ating diagnostic test. So, ito lang yung possible doon. Yung iba kasi doon, medyo komplikado yung paliwanag. Pero yung parehas, papuntang left, papuntang right, papuntang up, papuntang down, they will tend to cancel each other. So, yun ang pinakamadaling tignan doon. Sa vector quantities, madali rin makita yan. No? Kasi, di ba, yung mga opposite direction, ah, sasubtract mo lang naman yung mga yan. Okay? So, the, this is it. So, para sa pagpapaliwanag ng electric charge and electric fields, magandang gamitin ito. Okay, pwede natin aralin to So, sir, eh, hindi naman natin magagamit to pag exam. So, hindi nga, pero yung familiarization, yung makikita nyo siya na mabilisan, pwede to So, ang, ang analysis lang sa diagram na to if say magnitude, opposite direction, they will cancel each other. So, yun lang po. So, I hope you have learned about methods of charging and how charges interact. So, to learn more about charges, watch my next video in general physics. Kalmala!